Hi and welcome, I'm Helen Hughes from Mini Water Adventurers and I am your go-to person for swimming lesson ideas. to um, incorporate into your swimming lessons. Uh, this is perfect for parent and toddler and preschool and then the, also the early stages as well. And it was a day in the life of a robin. So I always try and build a swimming lesson on a story. So that also helps with the structure of, of the different activities that I would do throughout the lesson. And uh, these are really easy to make. They're made from craft foam. I have used brown and then a sparkly tummy for um, as robins are distinctively known for their red tummies. So I cut out however many I needed. Um, I always do some extras just in case. Um, I always like to have extra rather than not having enough. So. So the first things that they did was that I had them actually out on the wall um, where they would uh, practice their getting up and outs. And um, if they were tall enough to use the platform that we have, that we also incorporated in the platform. Before they actually went to get their robins, we do a welcome song. And I always use the same welcome song. Um, I have a different video on, uh, on that with regards to why it's useful to always use the same song um, at the beginning of the lesson. So anyway, we did the welcome song first. Uh, I told them uh, what we were doing today, what the theme was, so they could get their mindset around being little robins. And I then set them off to go and find their robins of so choosing which one that they wanted to have. So we then have an allocated part of the pool where they will be, where they come back to basically. So in parent and toddlers, I always let the parent know. Um, so just to let you know, preschoolers in stage one and two, I do not do a welcome song. So this was just for parent and toddler um, that I did do the welcome song. So I just needed to add that one in. Um, so, uh, but of course, with the preschools and this early stages, what any, uh, uh, any, children that I teach swimming or is let them know what uh, the plan of the, the lesson will be um, and also what sort of things and different activities and games and things that we'd be putting in the lesson just like some children like to know what they're doing um, in advance so that always helps. So coming back to the little robins, um, they go off and choose which robins. So they go climb up and out and go and choose their robin from the tree, uh, from the tree. Well, they robins do go in the trees, don't they? From the side of the pool that I've, I am, um, that you put them up on the side. So, and then what they do is they come back and then I've got these bowls, very inexpensive. They're on Amazon. I have a link in the, a link in the description of where you can find these. You get five for about three pounds, really easy, um, really cheap to be able to go get. And they last and you can use these for so many different things. So I asked them if there's a particular colour that they would like to have. Uh, generally, the children do say that they want to choose a different color, uh, choose a certain colour. So that's why I always now give them a choice um, rather than just giving it to them. If you find that children are taking a little bit too much time making a choice, then if you know those children, then you just say this one or this one, as opposed to giving them a whole big, um, a long uh, a amount of them so that they are umming and ahhing for quite a while. So if you've got those, just one, this one or this one. So they choose their little uh, bowl, which are which will be their nest. So the little robins come back and they're going to be... Um, uh, um, coming back to their, their nests. So the next part of the story is that the uh, the robin is very hungry um, and they need to build up their uh, energy stores because uh, they're building their nest ready for their chicks. So again, part of the story, the children absolutely love tapping into their imagination. Um, and so therefore I have a bucket of red balls which are the berries 
So the robins then, they're pretending to be robins, so they're practicing their kicking skills uh, and they will, uh, um, if they are going off independently on their own when they're in the parent toddler class, that's great because you can give them the noodles if they choose to go in their little robin carts, um, which helps them fly. And then with the preschoolers and stage ones, I always start in a noodle depending on the hold that you're using. I've got another video on the different holds of noodles, so make sure you check that one out. Um, but these little balls, uh, red balls, are the berries and they're going to go in collect. Now, I used to dump all the balls out uh, and they would then go and collect them. But what I found was, because I share a lane, is that they all ended up down the other end. I would probably annoy the teacher that was at the other end of the pool that was uh, I was sharing lane with. Um, and then it also gravitated towards the other side of the pool where family swim was going on. So again, I'm probably annoying people, but I also wanted to make sure that I have all my tools back in at the end um, to make sure that, uh, that they uh, don't go missing. So there's little berries. So now what I do is the amount of children that I have in the lesson, I will throw out. So they're getting at least obviously one. Um, if I find that there is a child that wants to get two, for one for each hand, then obviously then I've got the bucket with me that I can throw an extra one out if that is the case. Um, and I tend to then um, stand down at the other end to stop them from moving anywhere and also help because a lot of children obviously are swimming towards it and they end up then pushing the ball further away further away so I just block it so they don't get frustrated that they can't pick it up um, and then uh, they're going to go two times the first time they're just collecting and taking back to the nest and they're going to hold onto the sides and in parent and toddler they can use their parent and their knee to be able to stand on to then uh, uh, place their ball in their nest so they don't necessarily have to climb up and out and sit on the side to do it they can use their strength to push themselves up to place it in. Preschoolers in early stages, uh, again, they're using their grip strength in order to hold on to be able to then place. So I always say hold on rather than them trying to swim in and then they're trying to put the ball in um, at a height on the side. So I always ask them to hold on first and then place, uh, place the berry in. Second time round that they're going, again, I throw some more out and they're going to blow the ball back. So we're now adding in that extra skill of blowing the balls back and they can either blow it, uh, the parent can either blow it and parent toddler um, or they can splash it back. So they can use the water in order to move the ball back and keep it in their sort of line as to where they're going. Um, they can have little races if they want to, to get the ball back as quick quick as possible um, or they can um, uh, throw the ball ahead of them which entices them then to keep moving forward. So they go two times for that, that's a, a, a start of the warm up so they've got their berries uh, in their nest and the robin is, is, um, is now filled their tummy. <laughs> um, some children will still pretend to um, uh, feed the robin which is really lovely so a lot of the sort of the toddlers pretend to feed actually feed the robin which is really sweet um, and uh, you'll find that they do it different ways so. So it's great to have a bowl because obviously it's containing everything. If you notice it's too over over overfilling at that point then just move it um, such that it's easier. So the next thing they're going to do is that they uh, they have um, um, some chicks that are on the way. They have uh, uh, um, laid some eggs. And so I have little eggies here that I have. I've had these for years now. I use these obviously for Easter time and, and different things really. Um, uh, Springtime. Uh, uh, so many different themes that I've I've used these for. Um, I'll try and find some more, but even if it's colourful eggs and you can draw on, you can still use those or just get yellow eggs. But inside, I've actually put a large pom-pom in there, which is the chick. Um, I was going to put little red sort of tummies on there, but uh, that means I wouldn't be able to use these for, a, for anything else apart from this. So I just use them as black. And again, using their imagination that it is a little um, chick inside. They can hear it inside. These are great because they've got holes in here as well. 
So when you put uh, down and underneath the water, they actually create bubbles so they can watch the bubbles uh, um, actually come, you know, come from lifting this under the water. And then what I say is, is that when the bubbles have stopped, uh, you that means that it's full, filled up and that uh, they can then lift it up. And then you've got holes on the bottom of where you can then, uh, you know, water and do some extra. So it's just water exploration, really, before they then do the next activity. Um, <clears throat> But a couple of things that you can do with these. Uh, either you can throw them out again and they go and collect them. Um, generally at a toddler age, so in parent and toddler, they love going and collecting things. Um, it's it's a part of schematic play. So if you notice that children are enjoying it, add more in. Because um, it means that they're in a certain schema that they like transporting and um, they like to go and collect and things like that. So throwing these in are great. Um, I tended to say, oh, you know, knowing that they feel their tummies up they might sink down so we've got to go and get them as quick as possible again I only throw out the amount that's needed um, and they collect and bring them back now I ask them to have to hold them very carefully and um, because they're baby chicks and we need to look after them so again it's uh, creating that little uh, a, a tool for them uh, and also understanding that uh, it needs to be gentle you can be gentle in swimming as well to, to um, look after these things so they bring these back and then they can give them magic bubbles um, to open them up. So then at the end, when they've brought them back carefully, they're going to add in their bubbles. I tend to do their age, so the amount and how old they are. So if they are two or three, then they do two or three bubbles of where they then can open it up. Some children can't wait, <laughs> so they will naturally want to open it up straight away and to see what's inside, which is fine. And then you just ask the parents to put it together again and then just say, let's do some bubbles and then we can open it up. Um, and they tend to have the element of surprise again, even though they know what's inside. So once they've opened it up, you can then put their chicks either in their bowls um, or to the side, or they can add it in. You'll find that the children decide what they want to do with, um, with that. Um, and then you can do it as many times as you want. I don't tend to do it any more than three times because I think that otherwise it gets too much um, and they tend to get a little bit bored then of, of blowing the bubbles. So... Uh, so, so that's great. So now the chicks now need to be fed. So, um, so then I've got these little sensory caterpillars and worms and I've got these bugs that I've had for years as well. And these are Melissa and Doug bugs. And unfortunately, I don't think that they make them anymore, which I'm really upset about because um, I was wanting to get some more. But you can get similar ones, which I'll put a link in the description um, in the in the description below about what, what bugs that you can find that are oversized and big and that you can also use for, uh, for others uh, for other times as well. You've got, you've got little ladybirds as well. So... Basically, they're wanting to go and uh, feed their chicks. So again, a couple of ways that you can do this. That I can either go on their backs to practice being on their backs, um, moving moving down to where the area, because I've put these out to where the robins were, so they've already, already know. I keep them in buckets, so I can always say to them, uh, you know, the type that what where they're where they're going to, um, and where they will uh, where they can visualize where they're going to. Um, before I move on with regards to the eggs and then the uh, the bugs, I've also got some sensory eggs in here that I've used um, for years and years and years. Um, and these are really great. So if you don't actually have the you know the the two the eggs that come apart, you can always use then the shaker eggs. And these are really great because under the water they sound amazing, um, and the children love to shake them. So. Uh, you can have these something for them to go to use when they're on their backs and they can be shaking them and doing different noises um, as and when so it's a, a distraction if they're not quite sure and again I use a, a, I use a bag so that they can choose their own or they can have a look to see what colours they've got so I just wanted to add that bit in about those eggs but then talking about the, uh, the uh, little um, uh, sensory wormies and these are very popular so they would go down and there's a couple of thing ways of doing this they can either uh, go do go down uh, on the wall so shimmying down on the wall so they either mean caterpillars um obviously that we know it as being monkey monkey but i change it out because they're going to be little caterpillars um going along the wall 
and they're going to go and collect their food for they uh, for their robins and their little chicks so they choose their means of going and collecting and they go to the buckets the yellow bucket where they are i put a couple on the uh, on the floor as well that they can choose where they want to get them from and then i have the the different bugs as well for to, to choose from then they're going to do either a bug jump or they can do a safe entry. Uh, when they are doing their jumps, uh, they are doing it safely. So they're jumping into the parent standing to the side, if you're doing parent and toddler. If they are doing it with preschool and early stages, then they can either jump to their noodles or you can have them uh, jumping and then turn straight back to the side. So they're practicing their safety skills. And then they're going to bring back their foods uh, for, their little, uh, for their little chicks. So depending on what they use, again, these are always really popular. So they tend to come back and they can either put it in their little nest or they can put it next to uh, uh, next to it. That's absolutely fine. So again, you know, you can uh, um, go back and do that a couple of times, no more than three times I've done before. Uh, and, and then uh, that that's generally all that I tend to get or have them go and collect. Other types of things that I do is that uh, robins and birds love to have a bird bath. So I add in some type of water element of where I pour over their heads or their hands or if they don't want to go under. So there, there are some particular children sometimes in parent and toddler that still don't want to go under the water. So all I do is ask them to show me their hands, which means that they're choosing that they doesn't want to go over their heads. Um, or they can hold on to something. So you can actually have them holding on to their birds and they are uh, pretending to wash and water their little robins if they don't want to go under themselves. Um, so that's uh, great. You can always add in the water component if they are doing it individually rather than a group, you can do that. So you have little thing, water cups, um, cups or sprinkle toys out if they're wanting to do it independently. Uh, and then I always leave time at the end to do their safety skills of learning that if they ever fell in, uh, what do we do in order to help them if that happens? So, um, you know, with the parent and toddler, it's very much educational to teaching them how to, how to do that. And then with the preschoolers, uh, most of them love to be able to jump in. So we always leave the jumps to the end. Not to say that throughout the lesson, if they are wanting to jump, as long as it's safe, then I do add in a little jumping element. And if they do want to go down and underneath the water, these bugs actually sink down. So if you have any of those uh, children that are wanting to go down and under the water, I always have something that is sinkable uh, where they can go down and collect as well. And uh, we use that element too. So fly away little robins, enjoy your little robin theme uh, and let me know how it goes.
as I was writing my ideas, I came up with um, a couple of different extra sort of, um, you know, backup activities just in case. Um, I always like to have more than less so in my mind. So I was just thinking some other things. If you're finding that some of the children really are struggling on their backs and they, you weren't really, they weren't really wanting to go on their backs, the, the reason why you would have extra props is that they can always use those in order to sort of have a distraction technique to, if, you know, to get them on their backs, for instance. So um, if you had more than this, say for instance, my preschool class, I, there is only four of them in a class, whereas I have more than eight of these. So they've already picked a Robin. So you could always ask them that, um, you know, mommy Robin has a friend uh, and it'd be nice if they could go and collect their friend. So if you have more on the side and they can always go down and collect another Robin and they can always put the Robin on their tummies or they can balance it on their heads. Um, and it's just another way of them to focus on something else swimming backwards. Um, the other thing is, is that uh, you can add in some numbers. So, um, you know, you have, no, don't really do any more than, uh, than four in parent and toddler, but you could always do, you know, according to the ability in your class, um, depends on how many times you want them to go. So, but you could have an amount of numbers that they go and collect the berries, so they can only go and get five, um, or if they pick out two, then if, you know, only have the amount of numbers that you are wanting them to go and collect. Um, and they can always go twice if they've got a high number to add then it's another learning opportunity to their addition of where if they need five they go down and get two how many more do they need to go and get and so on so you can always add in numbers and um, the other thing i've put here as well is um, they can actually sit on their noodles which is great for balance especially for the real for the younger ones because they're building their core strength so sitting on their noodles is really great and then it's also an opportunity for them to to learn their paddle stroke as well to add in their arms and um, rather than being just restricted by the noodles being around them unless they are wearing their orcas um, then they can be free and independent but um, if they're not wearing orcas then you can use it their uh, noodles to sit on where they can fly like a robin and you can always add in like a little bit of a simon says game like i've put here mummy robin says and you can say to fly to your right fly to your left um, and you can say stop or you can do any type of what i call directional work so you can have them moving round you can have them stop start and um, you can have them blow bubbles if they are going under you can have them go down and under and come back up and um so you can add in uh, those sort of things the other thing that i've um that i was thinking about as well is that if you are if you have got children that go uh, down and under is that again you know adding that type of element of of imagination of that uh, you know robins are diving down and under because they you know they're, they're really fast flying really fast through the air or what have you or again if you've got those children that are really struggling with blowing their bubbles you know you do have those preschoolers that are really not wanting to put their faces down what else can we use you know you can use things like the bowl um, and put in the bug and that you fill this with water and that they look at the bug and blow bubbles to the bug so they're not actually although they're they're still in the water um essentially the same amount it's just something for them to focus on rather than them actually uh, you know um, overcoming that sort of mindset that they've got at that point or changing it because you're changing what you're asking them to do you can have this under the water that they look down and you're holding it down and underneath the water or you could always hold um you know these under the water that they have to go down and collect if you have stairs my goodness they are such an amazing tool to have so if you've got gradual stairs coming down in your lessons you can use then put these down on the stairs so that they can go down and look and, and reach for and then build up their breath control um confidence using that so a couple of extras there for you.